Kendo holds a place in the pantheon of Japanese martial arts. Its roots reach to the days of the samurai. Their swordsmanship made the difference between life and death. In Kendo, victory is decided in an instant. One blink, one twitch, and it's over. Physical strength plays a part, as does technique. But winning a match doesn't guarantee achieving the goal. The aim of those who follow the path of Kendo is to refine themselves as human beings. Courtesy and respect. This match took place in Yamagata Prefecture in 1994. The tournament will determine who advances to the National High School Championships. It's close. Suddenly, the white team competitor seizes the advantage. But something's wrong. The referees confer and cancel the point. Why? Look again. It's the attitude that's the problem. A defiant pose. That may be all right on the baseball diamond or soccer pitch, but Kendo frowns upon it. The self-congratulatory gesture lacks respect for the opponent. Those who study Kendo say it's the path to developing one's own humanity. And that's the, that's the amazing thing about Kendo, because as you get older, you don't peter off, you actually get better. As your physical uh, strength and your speed drops, your mental and your spiritual strength compensates for it and takes it to another level. Kendo ideology is an outgrowth of Bushido, the spiritual way of the samurai. Samurai themselves are long gone, but the spirit of Bushido lives on, embodied in those who follow the path of Kendo. and welcome to Samurai Spirit. I'm your host, Nicholas Pettis. In Japan, I am known as the Blue-Eyed Samurai, but as you can see today, I'm wearing a hakama, which is used in the traditional Japanese martial arts called kendo. And we're here at a beautiful dojo. Let's go inside and check it out. They call Nicholas Pettis the Blue-Eyed Samurai. He came to Japan as a wide-eyed 18-year-old, hoping to learn something of karate. He began studying the Kyokushin style, often considered to be among the most practical approaches. Within five years, he won the European Championships and went on to place fifth in the World Championships. Along the way, he gathered many more honors in forging a distinguished career. He brings formidable power, an impressive physique, and unmatched competitive spirit to the practice. He since has ventured out into the arena of full contact fighting and aims to be its greatest champion. To come in contact with the Bushido spirit though, he visited a university kendo club. <laughs> this is exciting. Follow me. <laughs> Tokai University has amassed quite a record itself in competition. 
the kendo team has become a fixture at the national championships. Nicholas has come to ask the teacher to allow him to practice. I'm Nicholas Pettis. Nice to meet you. I would like to try your kendo if it's possible. You'll just be starting kendo study now, right? I see. Well, I can see your enthusiasm, so I'll make an exception and give you permission to engage in kendo practice. However, you can't practice dressed like that. Put on the proper equipment. Okay. Thank you. Everyone practicing kendo wears protective equipment. The helmet or mask called the men safeguards the head and throat. Kote, the gauntlet, takes care of the hands and forearms. Do, the torso protector, covers the chest and torso. Tade offers insurance for the waist. And Shinai, the sword made out of bamboo, is the only weapon in Kendo. It's pretty hard. All right, you need to gain some experience in Kendo. How about if we conduct some matches? Really? <laughs> The best way to understand kendo, the fastest way, is to get in and do it yourself. Um, okay, I will try then. Thank you. Why so suddenly? He just got the gear. Kobayashi? This fellow is Kobayashi. He'll be the other person in the match. Really? Oh, uh, Nice to meet you. Yoichi Kobayashi is the club's vice captain. He's 22 years old. Kobayashi began kendo in elementary school. He started with the beginner's rank of 6Q and since has worked his way up to the fourth dan, or fourth degree black belt. He still has a long way to go to achieve the goal he set for himself, eighth dan. Every day, he strikes to get better. They hardly could be any more different in build. In most any other competition, these two would never come up against one another. A kendo has no categories, so a large person and a small person may face one another. It happens all the time. So you're telling me that it doesn't matter how big or how small you are? I'm 106 kilos, and he's 62. That's almost half of my weight. That's amazing. And we're going to fight for real now. <laughs> Kendo matches are conducted on a wooden floor. It's 9 meters by 11 meters. Regulation time is 5 minutes. First person to score two points wins. In kendo, any point taken is basically called an ipon. They come in four varieties. Men uchi strike to the crown of the men helmet. Kote uchi the strike to the forearm portion of the gauntlet. The kote, the wrist of the opponent, is struck. Douchi, a blow to the side of the torso protector's hard lower portion. The sword reaches the do. Tsuki, thrusting the point of the sword to the throat protector. Tsuki targets a particularly vulnerable location. Striking any of these four targets correctly constitutes an epon or one point. But three elements must coalesce for the strike to be valid. Ki, Ken, and Tai.
they represent a fullness of spirit, striking the target properly with the sword, while maintaining the proper posture. The contact counts if and only all three are present simultaneously. A world-class martial artist comes men to men with Kendo. Will his experience in other areas make him a natural? Or will experience hold him back? Though footwork is Nicholas's forte, Kobayashi moves in to take a point. Nicholas couldn't get out of the way in time. Another men point. Kobayashi makes short work of his opponent. You hung in there, Nicholas. Go ahead and take off your mask. How was it? え、<笑> I can understand your feelings. I had the impression that you fought courageously with the combative spirit of a full contact fighter. In the kendo match, a combative spirit isn't enough, though. You need to remain calm and control your mind. That's important. You were close to hitting your opponent. In order to do kendo correctly, you have to train your body so the techniques become instinctive. Shall we try some of the basics? Do your best. I guess there's a lot to learn from this today. I'm really impressed now. We're going to move over to some basic training, so maybe I can learn some technique and uh, get back at these guys next time. <laughs> All martial arts involve marshalling the spirit. Yoshimura-sensei wanted Nicholas to experience how his competitive zeal might even get in the way of doing kendo well. The origins of kendo date to around the 11th century, the age when the Japanese sword was born. A sword is said to be the soul of the warrior, polishing their prowess with their swords. The early swordsmen and their weapons were one and the same. A series of wars ravaged the country, 
Whichever side one chose, he automatically acquired a collection of enemies from the other. Swordsmanship, Kenjutsu, was a tool for killing and surviving. The Edo period, beginning in the 17th century, brought a respite from constant battles. Peace begat order, and order begat peace. Warriors had far fewer opportunities to wield their blades. That brought about a change in attitude as to what the sword was for. The warrior class developed an ideology that transcended mere weaponry. One of the most renowned swordsmen of that time articulated the new vision of Bushido. Yagyu Muninori wrote, The essence is not a warrior putting his sword to use, but rather his ability to refine his spirit. These words inspired a revolution in the perception of swordsmanship. One of the things that Yagyu taught was that we win today by surpassing what we were yesterday. Until that time, swordsmanship was used for killing. It needed a new raison d'etre for an age of peace. The study of swordsmanship was transformed into an examination of one's own existence. It called for a proper lifestyle and daily perseverance so that one would not be looked down on as a coward. Overcoming oneself was viewed as of the greatest importance and became the aim of practicing kendo. This aspect of Bushido remains a major precept in kendo today. The purpose of kendo has transcended striking and defeating the opponent and has become one of overcoming one's own weakness and inadequacies. This higher ideal has become the quest of the warrior. Therefore, in order to refine oneself above and beyond swordsmanship, proper decorum and respect are paramount. Many practitioners felt they needed opportunities to test themselves, so rules for contests were established using the Shinayan protective equipment. In 1895, kendo was accepted as an official form of Japanese martial arts. So it is budo, a martial art and a means of self-awareness. The way of life and the ideals of the swordsman have not only survived to the modern age, they've proven to be both timely and timeless. Advanced practitioners may display impressive feats of timing and skill, but everything they do begins with the basics. Etiquette is fundamental. In Kendo, one always pays proper respect to the partner. The bow is conducted without fail. Kendo starts with respect and ends with respect. Proper etiquette and humility are essential when considering the formation of a proper human being. Kendo regards respect as having great importance. To begin with, when bowing formally to seniors or more advanced people, the upper body is inclined 30 degrees. Give it a try. All right then, when you are bowing to an opponent, never break eye contact. To accomplish that, the angle of the bow is changed to 15 degrees. Otagai ni rei. Always study the circumstances of the partner and look upon him with respect. In coordination with the partner's movements, bow respectfully. This is what bowing is all about. Next, we learn the on-guard stance. In Chudan no Kamae, the middle stance, we can attack and defend easily. It's the most common on-guard stance. In the Chudan no Kamae, you grasp the shinai securely in your left hand. The height of the tip is at the level at which the extension of the line of the sword is pointing between the eyes of the opponent. The line of the back is straight and perfectly erect. The chest is raised. This straight posture is the basis of Chudan. Finally, the basic footwork. 
one whose leg movements are smooth and nimble, has the upper hand. I'll explain ashisabaki, footwork, now. The most important thing about footwork in kendo is not picking your feet up from the floor. Rather, you use a sliding motion to get around. This is fundamental. But, Sensei, I'm sweating under my feet and I can't slide on the floor. How can you do this? Standing naturally and without putting any muscular tension in your feet, slide them back and forth. You can move smoothly in this way. This is difficult. Move with the feeling that you are gliding over water. Then your footwork will become smooth. Like walking on water. Oh, yeah, wonderful. We'll start with the kiai, the spirited yell. Start from over there. That's it. Keep your spirit up. Very good. By doing this kind of practice over and over, you learn to let go of unnecessary force naturally. Your movements will become efficient, and the speed with which you can swing the shinai will increase. How was your first experience with kendo? Um, my general impression was that it was, uh, it was an amazing experience um, to be able to fight at a real level uh, against a person who's even smaller than me or bigger, it didn't matter. Um, it was about speed and technique, um, not about size or strength. Kendo no. In order to make one's technique second nature, naturally, practice is important. However, that isn't everything. Other kinds of practice are involved too, like cleaning the dojo. This also polishes the spirit. Another part of the kendo discipline involves caring for the shinai and the rest of the equipment. Can you please tell me what the Budo spirit is for you? The Bushido spirit is alive in Kendo. Without assuming the correct state of mind, without polishing one's spirit, no matter how hard you work at improving technical skill, you can't make much progress. Understanding that is important. Win or lose, a match is only a means for one's study. The outcome of the match is not the true measure of success or failure. Cooperating with your partner, you both build yourselves up. This certainly will carry over into everyday life. Until now, I've been fighting to win. I always thought the competitive spirit in a competition was a source of power. But in Kendo, I seem to feel a different source of strength. I need to find out what this is. Nagoya University of Foreign Studies has a specialist in Japanese martial arts who's active in promoting Budo overseas. Alex Bennett is a sixth Dan in Kendo. He comes from New Zealand. 
As captain, he's led his country's team to notable success in the World Kendo Championships. Alex started Kendo 20 years ago. He came to Japan as an exchange student at the age of 17 without ever having encountered martial arts before. Kendo is very complicated. There are many, many criteria that need to be met. And the first time I saw it, I, of course, I had no idea. Um, all I could see was that it was just a lot of people running around screaming and yelling and hitting each other with bamboo sticks. Um, so it was, it was a little bit perplexing. Somehow, he became entranced by Kendo and applied himself to rigorous practice. Over time, he's come to understand that the real essence of Kendo is development as a proper human being. Uh, so there's always a responsibility to make sure that you are also developing. Okay, you're not in a position where you're at the top, so you guys have to copy everything that I do. You also have to be learning and training and uh, imparting that knowledge to the students. So it's an ongoing process. So even though sometimes I'm a teacher, I am always a student. And that's a really important part of, of, of the Kendo way, or the Kendo process. Kendo has inspired him to embark upon a lifelong quest to make himself such a person. He searched for and read many Japanese books and Budo treatises. Part of his own practice involves making those insights available to people around the world. So Alex, um, what do you feel um, is the most important thing that um, Kendall teaches you? Uh, first of all, it's the, there's a word in Kendall called uh, shikai, or it translates into English as, as the four sicknesses of the heart, mm. or kokoro no yotsu no yamai. Four sicknesses of the heart mean, uh, essentially, is that, um, well, there's, well there's, the first one is, is surprise, doubt, fear, and hesitation. And what that means is, for example, if I'm suddenly faced with the great Nicholas Pettis, who's you know, standing there with a, with a sword, and I'm thinking, wow, I've seen him on television. What am I going to do? I'm a bit scared. Mm. So if I'm scared, obviously that's an opening. Right. It's a, it's a chink in my armor. Or if I think, well, maybe if I do that, I don't know how good Nicholas is at, uh, at Kendo, so if I do that, maybe he'll hit me in the kote, or maybe he'll hit me in the man. That means I'm hesitating. Right. And if I hesitate, again, that's another weakness. So in the, in the course of the training, in kendo every day what we're, we're trying to do is we're, we're uh, regardless of who our opponent is might be a little kid might be an old man might be the old Japan champion might be the world champion doesn't matter who they are we face them fair and square and we try and do our best technique without being scared without hesitating without doubting ourselves and it's a lot harder than you think right um, the kendo gives you mm. an opportunity to train yourself. Exactly. Not to train to win, for example, exactly. or to train to do something, accomplish anything, but it's, it's about you, right? That's precisely it. And in order for you to be able to face your fears, and you have to face your fears before you can overcome them, and you have to overcome your fears before you can develop as a, as a, as a person. And in that sense, your opponent is not really an opponent as such, or an enemy, mm. but as a training partner, uh, uh, somebody who is cooperating with you, or collaborating with you, because you're doing exactly cool. the same thing. So you're working mm. together for this common cause. And you find that, uh, uh, like, I'm in my late 30s, I'm still, you know, pretty strong, very fast, um, pretty uh, technically um, proficient. I could go up against an 80-year-old man and I won't be able to touch him. Wow. And the reason being is because he has developed his spiritual armor, if you like. I hate using that word in English, but that's the best way I can think to describe it. He, he's not afraid. He doesn't hesitate. He, he sees all of these four illnesses in me, and he just picks them off one by one. 
<laughs> and so I can't do anything. And that's the, that's the amazing thing about Kendall because as you get older, yeah. you don't peter off, you actually get better. As your physical uh, strength and your speed drops, your mental and your spiritual strength compensates for it and takes it to another level. Wow. And that, that's why um, in, in Kendo you, uh, you get big guys and you get little guys and you'd think that there would be a, an advantage if you're big and tall, but that's got nothing to do with it. When fighting, our opponent is not the enemy. He is the means to improve yourself. We always need that tool to refine our skills and spirit. It was the first time for me to hear such a way of thinking. It reminded me of the famous words taken from the samurai code. The essence is not a warrior putting his sword to use, but rather his ability to refine his spirit. Eights Dan Tsuyoshi Nibori has been refining his spirit for over 76 years. Hanshi is a title that is something different than a Dan level ranking. It's bestowed on those with a deep understanding of the meaning of Kendo. Those who have attained a high degree of refinement. Hanshi is the highest accolade in Kendo. Nine years after Nibori passed his eighth Dan exam, he received the title of Hanshi. In my search for a deeper understanding, of the world of Kendo. I would like to meet a master of the art and then ask him about it. Yep, this is it. Nibori Sensei has just started a practice session in the dojo. And the person he's teaching is an accomplished teacher in his own right. He carries the title of wrench, sixth then, Atsuo Hanawa. Atsuo Hanawa has been studying Kendo for 31 of his 42 years. Renchi is a title awarded to teachers who have been highly appraised. Nibori Sensei strikes a startling textbook point. It looks like they reached each other simultaneously. Let's now see it in slow motion. The moment that the opponent's attack was about to land, Nibori Sensei deflected the power of the Shinai at the base. Continuing from there, he made contact with the opponent's headgear. The elapsed time from the initial attack to counter movement to taking the point was 33 hundredths of a second.神様的な存在なんですね。で、稽古稽古してても何しても、え、八段の先生の内から出てくるものっていうものは言葉で正直言い表すことができません。それぐらい素晴らしいものを持ってらっしゃるんで、一生懸命こっちが攻めてもですね
無,無理な攻めから打っても返されてしまう。I'd like to ask you first,、um, everybody that are below you, if I may say so,、um, try to aim at your level and, and get to where you are now at your stage.、Um, once you've gotten to your stage, what do you feel that you see now? 頂上に登ってみるとですねまた向こうに大きな山があるように思いますそれは何かというとですね、えー、私の師匠が言ってましたですけどもねうん剣道は打たずに打たれなさい受けずに打たれなさい避けずに打たれなさい力を抜いて柔らかく相手と仲良く穏やかに姿勢は美しく仁王がごとき斬新をって言われたけどねこの心境になるまでにはねまださらに向こうに山があるなあっていうふうに感じますね。Even in his 80s, Mochida had no trouble fending off even the most hardy of capable young competitors. It is said that if the training of the heart is complete, the movements of the opponent will become evident. This film shows Mochida sensei when he was 70 years old. He hardly initiates any movements, but he repeatedly responds to oncoming attacks. ですから立派な人間になるためだ、はい、そういう修行をすれば全世界が平和になりますよねはい<笑>先生 So、um, yesterday when I went to the Tokai University and practiced with the,、um, the university students、um, I was able to also fight one of the students over there and I felt for sure that I hit him、um, properly and I should have gotten a point but I didn't <笑><笑><笑>一致して当たらないと一本にならないんですそれはやはりね、えー、し持った市内は日本刀と思いと、えー、日本刀っていうのはあの手先で打って切れないんですね断ち切るっていうけどもね木と剣と体が一致しないと切れません剣道は武道です、はい、武道やはり剣道をやって持った市内が日本刀と思うような気持ちになれれば武道だと思います持った市内がこれはボッキレだと思ったらスポーツだと思います例えばね、はい、そういうところのやはりものの取り方っていうのが一番大事ですと思うんですねはい、はい Nibori Sensei, I've come here today to learn more about the Kendo. Could you please experience with me the t e o s e Hi, Sekka Gu, Korai Dan, Skara, and Ya, it's a o t e a w a s e Tashima Shoka. Yosko Nasos. Hi. Yosko Nasos. Hi. Yosko Nasos. Hi. Nimbly, Nibori Sensei closes on Nicholas. He strikes his dough and takes a point.
And then, a second point. Nicholas closes in to make a strike. However, the master isn't caught off guard. To the contrary, he maneuvers at the exact moment, striking his opponent's gauntlet with the tip of his shinai, causing Nicholas to lose control. Sensei, it was an incredible experience um, to be able to uh, do the Teowasi with you. Um, I felt an in incredible kind of energy, and it was very hard for me to um, even try the moves that I'd been practicing yesterday. Um, I must say, I'm very, very impressed, and I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity um, to take care of me for today. はい、これは一生懸命に努力して自分のものにすることだから基本が崩れ出ると剣道は伸びませんだからもう少し基本をしっかり勉強しましょうはい、以上ですありがとうございました はい。Summary Spirit This time, me, Nicholas Pettis, experienced Kendo for the first time in my life to tell you the truth, it was hard, it was fun, it was interesting, but mostly what I felt from this time was that everybody who does Kendo has a certain kind of air about them. There's a certain kind of respect for their fellow man. That it makes them, it sort of gives them the power to make you, to want to, to make, become a better person. Um, I think Kendo, is a really um, good form of learning how to fight because there's no real danger of getting hurt in it. You could practice it with children, with women, uh, elder people like you saw today. Um, because it's not about power, it's not about um, aggressiveness, it's about being able to catch that moment, to be able to read the air between you and your opponent and then understanding to take advantage of that. And this translates directly into the forms of martial arts that I've been doing until now. And I actually think that this kind of practicing of the mind and the breathing, especially the breathing, where everything has to come together, everything has to come in to be that special moment. It's almost like getting a perfect knockout in a, in a, in a ring. This time, I, Nicholas Pettis, your host, introduce you to Kendo. Next time, we're going to go in to see other sports, other kind of areas where the real, true, Spirit of Samurai still lives. <laughs>